Alice held the paper in her hand, trembling. Jump, jump, jump. The word was written over and over, written in red, written in blood. It's just a dream, she reminded herself, but it didn't do any good. Through, though her mind knew it had to be a dream because nothing in real life could be as weird as the last few hours. Or was it minutes? Or was it years? Who knew? Everything felt real but slightly off. She felt slightly off. Everything was off kilter. Jump! The word screamed in her head, causing her eyes to wince close. It hurt. Everything hurt. She placed the paper down on the bed and rose to her knees just in time to see the blood on her white nightgown. It smeared on her, over her stomach, but when she lifted the garment, she wasn't cut, wasn't injured, wasn't hurt. Alice laid the gown back down, but the red still oozed. Alice, come to the door, darling. Open it up for Daddy. Knox pounded through the door, causing Alice to jump out of her skin. Jump, do it! Without taking another second to think, Alice stood on the bed and crept to the bookcase under the window. The knocks on the door behind her came faster and harder. She tried to ignore them and do what she had to do. There was no other way. The window creaked on its knees as she pushed it open, trying to stay away. And when she stood, she stood on the edge, the edge of whiteness, the edge of nothing. Outside her window looked like a stark white canvas. No sound, not even the sound of her breathing. The door behind her opened with a thud, and her father stood there, not in his uniform, but in the suit he was buried in. Daddy made it home from the war. He lived a while. She remembered now. And then he died. But she couldn't remember how or why. But she knew that he was wearing what he was wearing when the casket closed, and he wore it now. Alice, he yelled in his angry voice. She hated that voice. It made her cringe. So without thinking, she jumped, and she fell. Down, down, down the rabbit hole, wishing, praying for there to be an end, a door, something, something to hold on to. At first she screamed, but then as she kept falling, she saw no meaning in it. The longer she fell, the more she wanted to just be over. It needed to be over. Alice shut her eyes and felt the breeze blowing her hair. It was strangely peaceful. Not a horrible way to go. If she just kept her eyes shut, if she just... I think she's waking up. She heard the voice, far, distant. But if she could just make it there, she'd be okay. She'd be able to wake up and this nightmare would be over. No, Alice hasn't woken up in years. She heard another voice, a female voice say, see for yourself. The bright light invaded her eyes and she jumped. When she did, she sat upright in her bed. The walls all around her were white. It was a room, a small room. There was only one bed and a door, and two people wearing what appeared to be nurses' uniforms. Their eyes wide like she'd scared them. That made three of them. Who are you, Alice said, her voice scratchy like she hadn't used it in a while. Get Dr. Bowman. The woman hit the man on the arm and he complied. Doctor? Doctor? Where am I? Alice said. Her voice still sounded scratchy, still raw, slightly like her grandmother's. Brooke sighed, the nurse answered simply. It's, it's, it's a hospital for people who are mentally insane. Alice finished for her. She knew Brookside. She knew it well. It had always scared her as a child, sitting at the edge of town like some big imposing force to fear. No, no, there was no way she was really there. Just like the white room in her, of her, in her dream and her bedroom and the window and the hallway it was just a dream. She was still dreaming. She had to be. She had to be. Miss Claiborne, don't disappear again. Keep talking to me. Don't go back in the darkness. It isn't real. The nurse sounded panicked. Alice knew the feeling well. But there was no way this place was real. If that was true, then that meant Alice had two choices. She could stay there in the present and deal with Brookside, or she could decide it was all a dream and go to the next level. The choice is yours. In the comments, write, wake or dream. Alice's fate is in your hands.